Hi, I'm Alan Ng. I was Arnie Kitt, and today we review Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog, starring Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I, I believe this is our third Western in the in the last two months. Uh, what are I, I'm assuming you saw the piano. I, I've heard that Jane Campion calls this the male piano in a way. Uh, what are your thoughts about The Power of the Dog? I, I don't know. I mean, she certainly has a knack for doing these sort of early settler life uh, uh, films. It's been, what, 28 years since she did the piano? I mean, Anna Paquin was just, you know, a little child yeah. when she won the Oscar. Um, uh, it's actually been, I think, 12 years since Jane Campion uh, did her last movie. I'm such a huge fan of hers that to me, it was the fact that this was a Jane Campion movie was what made me really want to go see this film. I loved this movie, loved it. It, uh, you know, we reviewed Belfast and we spoke about how, for me, it ticked off so many boxes for Oscar contention. I felt like uh, Power of the Dog did exactly that for me, even though these are two very different movies, Belfast and Power of the Dog. I loved this movie. I thought the performances were incredible. I thought the direction, the cinematography, the editing, you know, all of that sort of stuff, just everything yeah. across the board. But it was the story. The story that I found so riveting because it was very character driven. It, it was very cruel and uh, violent but but it wasn't exactly you know like bloody like the harder they mm -hmm. fall uh so yeah. it was quietly violent uh, quietly cruel and uh and it really emphasis really was on on these characters yeah. and their inner workings and their inner demons and i just sort of felt like at every twist and turn, I was like, this could really go anywhere. Like these characters are making choices that one way would lead them down this path. The other choice could lead them this way. And it's like, I just don't know yeah. what option they're going to go with. And it was right. amazing to just watch. Okay. So you love this movie. I liked this movie. I don't think I could say I, I was guessing a lot in this movie. I, you know, it was, it's long. Uh, it's beautiful. It's long. The the story rolls out. And yes, it's a good character story. Uh, Bandit Cumberbatch and Jesse Plemons, who play brothers. Uh, you'd never put them together as brothers. But, uh, <laughs> but there they are. But to me, it was like, you know, uh, it, it was like I knew what was happening. I knew what was going on. And it just took a long time to get to the next stage. You know, it spent a lot of time just developing Benedict Cumberbatch as this kind of toxic masculine character who, you know, who has the kind of weaker brother who gets married and and he begins tormenting the wife. And I'm like, OK, so this is a, a story of toxic masculinity. But at the same time, there's kind of a, an, an LGBT element to it. And, uh, you know, and that twist was very interesting. And it kind of explains the kind of self-loathing behavior of the Benedict Cumberbatch character. But Oh my gosh, it just, uh, you know, this is a very long movie. I see. And, um, and I, I just felt like, uh, okay, I, I really do get what's going on. Can can we move forward? Hmm. I, I didn't feel that at all. I didn't feel like it was too long. I was utterly fascinated every step of the way. The story is told in these chapters, I think five chapters. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the movie starts off being, you think it's about, two brothers but then the point of view shifts and it becomes more about one brother and his step nephew brought upon the arrival of you know his brother's mm -hmm. new wife and so the, the the point of view uh or the dynamic shifts and so to me everything was a um, a fascinating slow burn that I didn't I, I didn't find it boring because it's easy to write off Benedict Cumberbatch's character as oh it's toxic masculinity mm -hmm. but it's it's not that you know it's the there is so much projection it's like you look at him and his step nephew played by Cody Smith McPhee and and you you look at them I mean they're they're similar in built the dynamic there in terms of um, sensuality and stuff like that just mm -hmm. starts to vibe in the same way. And it becomes a will he or won't he and which yeah. he am I referring to he? So yeah, and, I, 
you know, and I agree the toxic masculinity part of it is a setup for the second half. It, it, it you know, you talk about projection. That's, that's essentially what, what's happening here. Uh, again, my only real quibble is, wow, it's, it's just lumbering along at a very slow pace. And, and part of it is because he's so abusive up front, uh, it's now a slow burn of abuse. <laughs> and, um, and then you have, Kirsten Dunst's character who uh, who kind of becomes an alcoholic because of all this, you know, there's that chapter and that kind of plays out. And I, I think pacing really is my real complaint here. Yeah. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll grant the, the performances were amazing. Bandit Cumberbatch is, Bandit Cumberbatch is really good. Jesse Plemons is very much a supporting character. And, and Kirsten Dunst, uh, you know, you just really feel for her at this point. And you mm. realize at the end, it's really not about her. Yeah, I I think that uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is an Oscar uh, nominee this uh, year for this role, for sure, without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I guess the question is, you love this movie, but yes. did you love it as much as Belfast? Yes. And, uh, and I'm going to guess no. So maybe you gave it, well, I think you gave that one a nine. I, I'm yes. going to suppose you gave this one a nine, but yes. barely under it. Yeah, I, I, I gave it a nine. I, I give it a nine. It's worth it for me 100%. Uh, it's so different than Belfast. Like, the, the, I mean, it's really apples and oranges. Belfast was, um, you know, a completely different movie in style and in tone. There's a lot of humor to that. Uh, it was. It takes place on a street versus. Yeah, one uh, street. <laughs> versus a giant land. Vast land. So, um, but um, I, I say go go see it. Uh, it's a brilliant filmmaker. Some brilliant acting. It's just all of this fit together in in one film, which I didn't find to be too mm -hmm. long. So I gave it a nine. Really looking forward to seeing it recognized uh, by uh, our Critics Choice Awards group when that time comes, as well as the Academy and uh, SAG, Directors Guild, all that sort of stuff. Um, I am so disappointed, Alan, that you just didn't enjoy it as much as I did. I think you gave it, you, I think once you feel a movie's too long, it's really hard to start. I think the numbers start going down in your head, ratings-wise. I think you gave it a seven. Yeah, I gave it a seven. I mean, it's it's worth watching, mm -hmm. especially for the performances. Story is good. Again, I'll just go back to length. Uh, I don't want to belabor that part, but you know, if if you are kind of looking at your watch and 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 there's just a sense of you know uh, if you're just sitting there and you 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 are present with the movie and you feel like it's not moving forward, then that's where you, the watch starts coming to play and you're mm -hmm. looking at wondering how much time you have left. And that's that's definitely the feeling I got it. You know, it's like okay, I get it. Let's move on, and that's well, that's the way I go. I'm All right, bummed. I'm bummed because I didn't feel that way at. All right, so uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below uh, what you thought of the power of the dog. Did you agree with me with the with its uh, long length, or did you fall in love with it, like Soriana? Let us know in the comments. And with that, let's get out of here. All right. <laughs>